the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Holy Sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. Let me begin by saying Happy New Year! Go on, don't be shy, turn to your pew neighbor and wish him or her Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Well done, well done. This is the New Year celebration that does not find us fatigued with late night parties. <laughs> This is the new year that will give us a sustenance for a lifetime if we open our hearts and minds to it. We now enter this four-week season of the new church calendar year with this first Sunday of Advent. We leave year C behind and enter year A. If you pray the daily office, we are now in year one. Purple used to be the color for Advent. But Advent was never meant to be a penitential season. Sarum blue is the color of preference these days. It was named for a liturgical rite from the medieval period of the church in Salisbury, England. Here at St. Stephen's, we use this blue for the vestments. I am blessed that I have two vestments, so you will be seeing a variety this season. And we dress the chalice and altar hangings as well. In some churches, the third Sunday in Advent shows the color rose to signify the halfway mark of Advent and joy. Notice the pink candle in our Advent wreath that is not because we ran out of the other colors. Always notice the color of the day because it marks the season that we are in and there is always some meaning behind it. Blue also represents Mary, the mother of Jesus, who had the awesome responsibility of being pregnant with him. Advent. The coming and for us the preparation for the arrival of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, as he came to us in the very fragile form of an infant. The Episcopal Church of the Advent in Boston, Massachusetts, describes Advent in this manner. Advent comes to us in three ways. It is about the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem from the past, the second and future coming of Christ at the end time, and the present coming of Christ through grace into our hearts and souls. In Paul's letter to the Romans, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. Be ready, be aware, and be prepared. The reference to darkness and light from the opening collect comes to us also from Paul's letter to the Romans. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. We experience this notion of darkness and light through many sources in our lives. Literature, music, scripture, and just about any classic TV or movie. Sometimes we may link darkness to isolation, a separation from others, a spiritual blindness that takes away any sense of clarity. Light gives us a sense of understanding, an ability to see with our whole being, and also a feeling of joy and expectation. This collect asks God to give us the ability to fight off a sense of darkness with an armor of light, and Paul tells us to go one step further by putting on the Lord Jesus Christ in order for us to live honorably. C.T. Whitmell, an English amateur astronomer, once wrote, In darkness, there is no choice. It is light that enables us to see the differences between things, and it is Christ who gives us light. There is no magic formula or secret manual to let us know the exact time of the coming of the Son of Man. The writings of Nostradamus do not work here, nor any horoscope or astrological chart. How easy it would be if we had a prescribed time. We could gather all our good deeds and lay them out before God to show how ready we are and to shout, Please, take us now, because we cannot wait any longer. Or at least maybe some of us would. 
In the passage before today's reading from Matthew, we hear Jesus telling his disciples, Immediately after the suffering of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Oh, woe to the followers of Rome when that happens. Matthew used the images that emperors had used with the power of the sun, S-U-N. Even Nero included among his titles, new sun, and that's S-U-N. Jesus tells the people that the earthly powers of Rome will be diminished by the true power of God. The power of these statements would have been electrifying for those who heard them. But here comes the catch. But about that day and hour no one knows. Neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Wow! No clue or hint there. As the people in Noah's story went about their daily business, Oh, noticing the raindrops, of course, but not understanding their significance, so do we get caught up in the trappings of our times. Darkness can also come from our grumblings and complaints, and there seems to be way too much of this going on today, as well as some who voice a cynical approach about this time of year. We know about Black Friday that happened a few days ago. <coughs> And for those of us who cannot handle the crowds, we will have Cyber Monday tomorrow. We, have it, we are encouraged to add to our ever-increasing credit card debts in order to spur the economy to the best ever end-of-year tallies. How sad for this pressure that comes to all. The businesses, the people who work terribly long hours, and for the consumers who get caught up in this hyperbole. The really sad part of this madness is that this beautiful season of Advent will be completely overlooked and lost during this frenzy. And why should we prepare? Why should we get excited about another Christmas? It does happen every year, doesn't it? What is the fuss? Well, each Advent brings us new awareness, new growth into our spiritual life a new appreciation of hearing one small phrase or even one word of scripture that suddenly stands out to us if it had never ever been heard by us. Our discovery of the Christ child this year should be one of new wonder and new expectation. This season and the next one of Christmas are not just for children unless we understand we are all children of God no matter our age. Our tradition of celebrating each of our church seasons is a great part of who we are as Episcopalians. This first Sunday of Advent gives us the opening signal to prepare for this year's coming of the Christ child and for the ongoing relationship of Christ within us. Matthew shares with us Jesus' talk with his disciples about the awareness of the arrival of the Son of Man. Again, we must not carry on with our lives as the people of Noah's story did. We must open our senses to be aware of the world around us so that the flood will not come and sweep us all away. What do we do? We simply practice our faith. In a commentary on today's Gospel reading, Professor Eugene Boring wrote, this passage is about the coming of the kingdom in its fullness, the return of Jesus. We might find ourselves asking, what do we know and what do we not know? It is easy to say what we don't know. We don't know the time, the year, the month, the day, or the hour. People who pour over the books of Daniel and Revelation, attempting to crack their code, are fooling themselves. We simply do not know. What we do know, however, is what we are supposed to be doing in the meantime. 
Because we don't know the day or the hour, we are always to be ready. In the context of Matthew's Gospel, that means doing the deeds of mercy, forgiveness, and peace that characterize kingdom people. Throughout church history, there have always been groups that convinced they knew when the world would end, would quit their jobs, and wait with eager anticipation for Christ's appearance. In Matthew's understanding of the Christian faith, the second coming doesn't cause us to quit the job of being church in the world. Rather, it calls us to take it up with even more urgency. Our present time does not hold exclusive rights for terrible things happening. In an earlier part of this chapter of Matthew, Jesus warns his disciples about the end time, the apocalyptic era. Beware that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumor of wars, and see that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of birth pains. Are not these familiar sounding crises for Matthew, even though this gospel was written sometime in the 80s of the first century? We talk about recycling being something new. Unfortunately, we also recycle our propensity for violence, bigotry, racism, and we certainly have witnessed the continuance of natural disasters. Human history is a repeated season and cycle. Is it little wonder that we need to embrace the church's tradition of church seasons so we can learn more? act more and contribute more to our faith through our actions. Advent is not just a stopgap or a shopping spree between Thanksgiving Day and Christmas Eve. This is the time to reflect upon this gift of yet another new year, a time to understand our relationship with Christ along with our sisters and brothers, a time to reach out with charities of heart and know that these are to be lifelong gifts and actions, and not solely for the month of December. Break away from this fast track of the secular madness and be open to the joy and light that are ours through the grace of God. To borrow from and to add to the psalm for today, may the peace and love of Christ be with us all within and without our walls. And may we experience the quietness within and beyond our towers during this Advent season as we again prepare and wait for the coming of the Christ child. Let us pray from Stephen Shakespeare. Holy thief, stealing away our false securities and idle vanity, awaken us from the dull sleep that clings to empty fear and vacant routine. Unfold on us the time of crisis when love of truth floods a thirsty world through Jesus Christ, the one who is to come. Amen.